On tonight's show, we have actress and entrepreneur, Shavana Ray. And now, for your host, Cool Park. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode 146 of the Kicking It With Cool Car Show. I am your host, Cool Car. Thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, I invite you to subscribe. We're going to jump right into this interview because I have a guest. She goes by the name of Shafana Ray. She's an actress. She's an entrepreneur. She's many hats. All right. Um, she's in a time crunch, so we're going to get this interview going and get her on out of here. Uh, we're gonna dive right in. Let's go, y'all. show is your final ray that was a great intro <laughs> thank you I, I try to do my best to you know serve you right in the you know what i mean i got your best interest at heart <laughs> <laughs> yes but listen i know you're in a time crunch i know you're traveling thank you for coming on here with such little time um i do start my show off with a prayer let's pray for some traveling mercies for you let's just throw them prayers in the air heavenly father lord jesus we just thank you for tonight we thank you for just allowing us to make this happen and make this possible lord jesus we just pray and ask that shifana makes it home safely and to wherever she may be traveling heavenly father lord jesus just deliver her there safely and soundly without any any consequence any car wreck any anything heavenly father lord jesus just deliver her safely and soundly to wherever she may travel and back on home again heavenly father lord jesus we just Thank you for this night. We just thank you for the times. We just thank you for love, life, happiness, and great health, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. We had, to, we had to throw that one in there real quick. Um, but yes, listen, thank you so much for coming on. We're here to celebrate you. You are an actress. You have some projects that you have coming out. You've been working hard. You've been doing your thing. I know this is going to be rushed. I really wanted to dive into everything you got going on. But let's just start off with highlighting who you are, what you've been doing, and what you got coming out. Woo, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I am Shafana Ray. Um, I am a mommy, and I am uh, just a lover at heart. Um, one of God's favorite people. Yes. And uh, God chose me to take on this acting journey. So um, I was a shy girl that didn't really like talking about myself, still really don't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just worked through my shyness over the years in front of the camera, like just threw myself in front and just started working through it. And I believe that in most instances when it comes to my craft, you know, I'm not even thinking about myself. I'm just thinking about that character and just diving in. So I've been able to overcome it that way. Well, it's kind of shocking to hear that you're shy because, I mean, every time I'm around you, like, we have such a good time, laughter, joking, it's goofy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, your personality is just great, you know, bubbly. So, for you to say, I'm shy, wow. I had to break out of it. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, you did a good job because nobody could ever tell that you were shy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, you're just charism charismatic and the whole nine, so... Yeah, man. Good for you. Good for you. So growing up, like when you were shy, you, did you ever feel like you'd be acting or is this a some? Did you have a love for it, but just never went for it because you were so shy? Yeah, I didn't even think it was possible where I'm from. I'm from a, from a small town, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and you didn't see many people doing that. I had, we had a few athletes, but at that time we were, there weren't many people that were acting. I didn't know that it existed from my small town. I just thought it was something that I could watch the Huxtables do, you know? Right, right. And I got my first opportunity to star in a independent film 
I just kept on going and learning and learning and learning and learning and growing. <laughs> so, so when did they really take off for you? Like when you moved to Atlanta? Is and is that I why you moved don't, to Atlanta? I honestly don't feel like it's taken off yet. You know, I, mean, I feel like you're busy. You're busy. You're busy. You book. You you do your things. Even if, listen, this is what you gotta understand. And people got actors need to understand this. You know, I'm an actor too. We know that's how we know each other. Listen, I don't care if you're doing low budget, indie, non paid, whatever. It's still work, and somebody still chose you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a, there's a lot of people they could have chosen, but they chose you. Even if it's no pay, indie, low budget, they still had auditions and they still chose you. So you don't have that mindset of I still ain't made it. You're doing it. This is true, but cut the check. I want. The, I, 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 I know you the want check. the check. We all want the check. <laughs> <laughs> we all want the check. But you, you got to celebrate what you have accomplished because you are an active and working actor. It, the checks might not be there just yet. But you know what? The checks are there. So let me let me take that back. Okay. Because even though it's, even if it is an indie, they still come to me and respectfully, respecting my craft. Yes. Are making sure that they do have a budget for me. So yeah. I, I am thankful for that. Absolutely. So again, did it take off for you when you went to Atlanta and did you move to Atlanta for the acting? <laughs> I did move to Atlanta for film and television. I did. Okay. I was in Harrisburg and I was, um, I've always taken my career serious. So I would travel to New York from Harrisburg for acting classes. I would travel to Philadelphia and then I would take on the community uh, theater in Harrisburg to train. Okay. And I got to the point where it was like, I need to be where there's more of me, more people right. that do what I do and where it wasn't as expensive to take class because I needed to travel, you know, four yeah. or five hours. Um, so now I live in Atlanta and I sometimes travel to LA for class. So yeah. <laughs> there's that. But yeah, I think that Atlanta made me a little more serious. I started with my agent once I got to Atlanta. Okay. And yeah. And what agency are you with? I'm with Gil Talent Group. Okay. I'm represented in Atlanta. I'm represented in Chicago and new york as well as la la is new for them okay so. well that's good that's good so that's good to know because if there's an actor watching this that needs representation and they're trying to you know weed out the ones and that's good now they know about guild talent they know that they're chicago new york la atlanta that's that's really good to know so good come to the winner's circle <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> as i exactly. like to call it the winner's circle <laughs> yes so now listen, I know that you, you know, when we were in, back in acting class and stuff and around each other a lot, you weren't really heavy on social media like you are now. I, I saw recently that you've gotten into doing the skits and you, you know, you're running around with a couple of comedians and you're out there, right? Is that an angle that you took to promote your acting skills and just try to create more opportunities or what's that thought process behind that? I think that um, I have been actually doing skits Prior to meeting you, I have been doing some. Um, I had like the Morgan brother uh, way back then. It was Mike Ben okay. as well as, um, yeah. So I had started doing them and I do them because I was doing them because it was fun. Right. I want to act. I always want to work. I always want to hone my craft or just do different things. So when I was doing them, it wasn't a matter of, oh, I want to get this following or I want to gain notoriety. It was just, I wanted to do it, you know? Yeah. And so I took a break from it and then I got back into it again. <laughs> I must and have met it just you so during happens the break. to be, yeah, it just so happens yeah. to be that people like to work with me because I'm kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have, good, you have great energy. Like you have great yeah, energy. Yeah, that's what they keep telling me. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they keep saying this, so... Um, yeah, so that I think that has helped as far as because people are like, well, who is she? I didn't, I never, I never knew her. Like, why don't yeah. I know her? Then they want to know more. So that's been helpful in, in getting out there. And also for me, part of my angle once I realized that that was a way to get people to follow you and just to know who you are. And yeah. It was like I want to make my agent's job as easy as possible. Yeah. You know, I want them. I want them to be able to say, "Oh, well, this is Shafana Ray. She has X, Y, Z going on already." Right. Before I even come in, I love the mug. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna start se selling these things in a minute, serving them off. So if you want a mug, you know, holla at me. Exactly. <laughs> For real. Yeah, now I know. Can can we can we talk about just real quick? I know you gotta go. Can we talk about your day job? I'm not gonna say it until what, you. Give what me day job? I don't know if it's a day job now. I just know you've done some work at a studio. I don't want to say the name until you give me the green light to talk about that. We can talk about anything. So, um, yeah. So sometimes I do work a lot behind the camera. I've worked. I started actually um, when I got to Atlanta. I started with background work. Okay. Um, just kind of noticing and seeing how things work on a large set, you know. And that actually ended up landing me on uh, doing production work on shows like um, The Rap Game first season. Um, then we had a show we were doing at Tyler Perry Studios where we were just getting the footage of the behind the scenes of what goes on and you know what goes on into making the show a success. Okay. Um, that show is still in the works so I can't talk too much about it okay. but being there was a great experience because I got to see the BTS of of putting the show together. Right. Um, I still uh oh, we lost her. We lost her. We lost her. Maybe she'll call back in. It's all good. We'll get her back in here real quick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we we got Shapana back. She uh, her phone died. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it real. Died. I thought she missed the transportation or the, the cell service was bad, but her phone died. Right. But anyway, you were saying that you were working on set and you got to see a lot of the BTS stuff that you had not ever experienced before. So, continue. So, not so much that I never experienced it before. I just experienced it from a different point of view. Okay. So, with this point of view, I was right there with crew. Okay. Um, I came in as a production assistant and next thing you know, I was producing my own, uh, I had my own production team, I had my own producing um, creativity. Okay. Um, yeah, at one point I was, yeah, the camera operator at one point, I had like steady cam and I had my own actual operator as well, my own sound um, team and my own story I was able to build through there. But being there and watching how, how they put the pieces together, I was able to see all aspects and just be in the room. Be in the room, I was able to interview a lot of the talent for the okay. show. So I was doing interviews. Um, it was really dope. It was really dope. And what did that do for you as an actress from that standpoint? Seeing well, for actors. one, it got me ready because I saw how they work with the skeleton script and you may have one script and you show up and it's totally different. Yeah. And they may be yelling something out and you got to pick it up. You got to pick it up and then the speed and then the, the way how quick they work. Okay. But it made me hungry to be there and I already know that at some point I will be a um, regular i'll be series regular for one of the new um one of the new shows that's going to come out because i had that dream so let's we'll talk about that when you it know. happens <laughs> manifestation speaking to an existence all that but i mean you're in the room so you know what I'm it feels room. like already and that's that's what some people need they just need to know what it feels like like for me I, I imagine a lot of things. I got a very colorful mind, so I can imagine a lot of things. So if it does happen to me, I've been there before. I've already been yep. in that situation, so I'm not acting frantic. It's out of instinct, you know. Because now I know, I already know how to handle it. So for some people, like actors, actresses, they just need to be in that room, and that's why. You know, I've, I've had a lot of actors on the show, and we always talk about extra work. You know, you said you even done extra work, but that's why that's essential to being to becoming a good actor because it yeah. puts you in the room, it puts you on set. You kind of can feel your way out. Yes, you're not the principal. You know, you're not getting the treatment, all that, but that's not what matters. You just need to be a sponge. You need to be a student while you're there. See how you move, and then take take pointers. Take pointers from this. Go ahead. Additionally, um, so I actually, it's going to come full circle. It's starting to now um, because I did my, most of my extra work has been on Tyler Perry have and have nots. So even looking back at that, he treated background actors so good. We went through hair, makeup, wardrobe as if we were stars, you know, and it wasn't as um, intimate as what they may have been receiving. It was a big room, but we still went through there. We still ate good. He fed us good. And so having that experience 
and then coming in, you know, having a different experience with being actually part of a production team that was working there um, and being in meetings and being in uh, part of the conversations and running around with the camera, it's just different things like that. So it's coming full circle and just being side by side while he giving some direction. <laughs> yeah. But I, and, and I'll say this, man, just knowing the type of person or seeing from the outside in, because I don't know the man, but just seeing the type of person that he portrays to be or who he really is, and I hope that it is who he really is, and I'm pretty sure it is, I'm pretty sure he does that for a reason. He wants you to feel that. He wants you to know what it's like, because it can be you and it will be you. He wants it to look good too. He wants it to yeah. look good. Yeah. yeah. And you don't, it doesn't, you don't have to treat people bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I know like a person like him, I know he wants to pour into people and, and doing that for somebody, man, that means the world. Like you're coming in as an extra, you're probably like, oh man, you know, whatever it is, what it is, long days, I get a meal. But then you get that type of treatment. Man, you go, just imagine what that can do for some people. Yeah. You know, some people who are really doubting themselves because they're really not booking. They're not even getting casting calls. They're not, you know what I'm saying? They're just getting extra work, background work, right. and they're like down on themselves. Like, just think what that can do to them. Like, that can refill them, recharge them, put them on a whole different path and a mindset. That's true. Yeah. Let's talk about you. You, you. you just did divorce court. I saw you on there acting crazy, acting a fool. I was telling my real story. I don't know what you're talking about. I was telling my real story. I'm just saying, you was on there. Y'all laughing at my pain. This was my real story, my real situation. I saw you on you know, there. This man was dragging me. Oh, hurt and distraught. I've seen you. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So for shows like that. They actually reached out to us. Okay. We were... Um, in the auditioning process for another show mm -hmm. and that show they absolutely loved us but we got to the end and we didn't make the final cut so they reached uh divorce court and let them know hey there's this couple you'd love them they'll be perfect <laughs> <laughs> Clown. Y'all are comedy. Comedy. yeah yeah comedy. so we um it's funny because the amount of people, the amount of men <laughs> who have reached out to me to love me genuinely and I don't got to cry and I don't got to beg nobody to be with me. <laughs> I'm like, how are y'all getting my phone number? How is this happening? <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Yeah. So they started hitting my DMs like, yeah, I will take care of you. Um, let me just take you on a date. I'm like... No thanks. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know those type of shows. That's gonna open you up to a lot of stuff. Everybody wants to save them. You know what I mean? Everybody thinks that they can be that guy or that girl, that woman or whatever. So you already know. What but they praying doing. for me too. They like this poor girl. Let me pray for her. She's so stupid. <laughs> yeah, they, they seen you on that show on out. They seen you. <laughs> no, seriously. There is a lady who has a TikTok. Eight, eight series story about my episode specifically. Are you serious? Eight. I have to send it. And she's just one of many. Repost it. Yeah, I should. Oh, well, yeah, I should. Yeah. Yes, you should. Just reach out to her. I'm pretty sure she don't care. Repost that. Yeah. Yeah, like my, I, need to, I need to remix it. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. Do some reaction videos yes. to it. Yeah. There you go. See? You got it. Boom. Because yeah. they're her most viral videos. <laughs> yeah. So do that. Please do that. You got, hey, listen. As creators, creators, we got to take whatever we can take. Take what we can get, baby. Yeah. yeah. Make it do what it does. Let's talk about Chicago. You're on that tomorrow, right? So tomorrow. Yes. Talk about 10 9 Central. Chicago PD. Yeah, NBC. Yes. So I got to work on that. Yes. Um, really, it's not really, it wasn't really a fun scene. Because it was pretty sad. But just creating, you know. And I had the pleasure of working with a, a daughter. I got a daughter in the show. Okay. So I have a daughter. And she was so awesome. She's just like, time to go play. 
<laughs> and where was that film? Was that filmed in Chicago? It's actually filmed in Chicago. Okay. Yep, it's filmed. They have there's they have a whole studio. They have it going on down there because it's like um it's like the Chicago one. They have the fire, PD, yeah. and M. You all, yeah, yeah. 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 It was pretty cool. Um, I, it's weird because when I did the audition originally. You know, you come out to audition and you like, I killed it, I killed yeah. it. I was like, I started to tell my Chicago agent, like, go ahead and book us lunch, cause I'll be there soon, <laughs> you know? And then like a day or two passed and I'm like, uh, I should have did something different. <laughs> I started getting in that space. And um, I'm just like, uh, next thing you know, she's like, you're pinned. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, that's dope. I'm, I'm what? <laughs> that's dope. So, um, yeah, but they that was a quick turn. It's a quick turnaround. I actually got to do some ADR on it. Okay. So um, that was fun. That's an experience. Yeah. And another check. It's another check. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. But um, that was an experience. How many days were you on set? Um, so I was able to do two days. Dope. I only I only expected originally when the call came down. You know, they give you this big window, so you like, oh, yeah. that's about to be ten days. Yeah. Yeah, and then when the reality hits and you get that one day, but then it turned into two. Yeah. I had an experience with a Netflix series that um, should be airing early, early, early spring. Okay. Um, and I had one day there. They gave me three. They gave me mm. three. They brought me back three. Yeah. So mm. that was great. Cause that was in uh, uh, North South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. That was great. So, I, I didn't offend you earlier when I said day job. You like, day job? No, 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 no. Yeah, you did kind of offend me. Let's be real. I'm like, what? First of all, all I do is act. <laughs> but as an actress, um, I had reached out to my agency for um, just checking to see if they needed help with anything. Because a lot of people have been coming to me, trying to get referrals, different things like that. And I, I just happened to reach out to them at the right time they were they produce as well so they were getting going into production for a feature film mm, okay. and they said you know what actually yes we need help in our extras casting department nice. so i was able to bring in over 60 background artists and that was an experience because i started with the budget next thing you know i didn't have one mm. so i had to call in favors from my talented acting friends Okay. <laughs> to be background artists for this film. So I got to learn that people really do love me and, and, and they respect me in a way that they said, you know what, I normally would not do this, but because it's you asking me, I'll show up. And um, they did, and I cannot wait to, because since then I was a someone else acquired me as their um, background casting department. Um, but I went straight into that conversation as, do you have a budget? Yeah, for sure. Because I won't, I won't do that part again <laughs> right. without a budget. And um, but I'll be able to reach back around to the people who are like newbies and just starting out, who were able to come help as well. And I'll be able to tell them, hey, I can pay you today. You know that'll feel yeah. good. As well as I have another project that I am going to be putting together a table read for. So I get first picks on the lead characters, okay. on everybody in the project. I get to have um, like my hands are in every part of that. I'm going to make I'm show running on that. So I'll be able to hire people and say, you showed up for me, now show up for you because this is your opportunity to really do something here, you know? Yeah. Man, this I love, great. I have a passion for actors, as you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> and this is great for anybody that's watching who is an actor, actress, trying to break in, you know, not really seeing the results that you want to see. Get active into every aspect of acting or just get active doing something else like Dejo like likes to say be interrupted you know but get yeah. active don't just sit around and wait to book you, you have can. to keep yourself busy and why not yep. dive into the world of acting because there's so many aspects there's so many areas that you can dive into and make a living off of well for me honestly I feel like knowing all the aspects it helps to give me the respect for the craft yeah. and give me respect for what everybody else is doing on set but it also makes me a better actress you know it makes me understand what the what the director is asking of me or what the editor needs in that cut you know yeah. so when i went back to do my adr for chicago pd and they were the guy who's 
from the studio out in Chicago that was able to do it in Atlanta. And when he was complimenting, he's like, thanks for this great performance. Oh my gosh, you make my job easy. I'm like, what? <laughs> yes, I love it. I want to know what that experience on set for Chicago PD was like, because I know that somebody watching has never been on that type of set. What What's the difference between that and say, just an indie or a low budget film? Like, can you give us a drastic Um. Well, for one, when you're working with a low budget or indie film, they don't necessarily have the budget to put you in a trailer. So that you can have, not even for like a bougie reason to want a trailer, but just so that you can be in your own space. Yes. You can be in your own space where you can stay in character, where you could just, if you have something else to work on even, you know? Because yeah. at that time, I also had an indie project that I was working on. I had to go be from Chicago, land. I had like three simultaneous indies that I was working on. So I had to land from Chicago and I went straight home, grabbed my wardrobe and headed to another set. Okay. So I was able to be preparing for that, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, I was able to have my own space and just relax into it. Just relax into the moment and soak it in. Um, also, um, wardrobe, you know, wardrobe is a big thing because they was able to pull different pieces. Whereas a lot of indies that you have to come with your own wardrobe, which is cool sometimes, but I would rather just concentrate on the work, the work of being yeah. the actress versus what am I going to wear? How's my hair going to be? What's my right. makeup going to be like? I don't want to do any of that. Yeah. I just want to show up and do my job. You don't want to show up with like five different looks. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because then I have to keep track of that. Yeah. Exactly. On the indie, they like they're like, oh, okay, what did you have on this? This is day one again. You gotta come back with they, with consecutive. I'm like I don't know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just I don't want to think about that. So yeah, that's a, one of the huge differences. And then of course the pay, the pay is different. Where what I would make on one day on a show like Chicago PD, on another show would take me the whole ten days to make oh, that. But I'm still grateful for it. Yeah. I'm still grateful for it. So. Absolutely. Are you sad yet? I've been eligible for a ridiculous amount of time. And you know, like they say, you don't need to until you need to. Yeah, yeah. So, Save that money right now. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because I need these indie projects sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. I started an indie film, so I have a passion for them, you know? You I don't want to get to a point. Yeah, you I started with indie film. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So I'm like, I love it. I mean, they're fun, they're fun. And you know what? I think for indie films, they're fun, but they also give you that freedom to explore your talent and flex your muscle because it's not so stringent on, no, stick to the script. If we need this, we need that. Like, it's flexible. It's a little flexible. Uh, depending on which set you're on, though. So with yeah, Chicago yeah, PD, yeah, so with Chicago PD, what happened was during my audition, I always, 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 I swear by two takes. I swear by two takes. And since I've been doing that, I've been booking, okay? Yeah. So with that, wait, wait, when wait, I got wait, my- Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I know what you're saying, but clarify that to somebody watching okay. who doesn't know. So it. when you do a self-tape audition, we typically, we tape at home or we use a taping service in order to send into production for them to say, okay, we love it, let's book her. Yeah. So for that, I love to do a tape where it's more grounded. It's exactly what they're asking for, maybe in a different way. But then I also like to take one where I play and I have some fun and I put my spin on it, my creativity on yeah. it. And with that being said, I had threw in some extra words in my in my button and with some things that I did. I was just in the moment. I was just I was just in the moment. Yeah. And when I got my script, the things that I added, they added. They were in there. And I was like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait. I don't remember that being in my script." So I had to go back and look. And I was like, yeah. So, so that, that was sense, a good feeling. You, you, so, but also, so they gave me that freedom. You, you helped them, yeah. You had that freedom, and you helped them create the character. Yep. And then, so when, um, so I started off as mother, and then I got my next script after they met me that first day, and I had a name. Yeah. And I was like, okay, they're messing with your girl. Yeah. I'm yeah. And then with Indy, I had one project, and it's always different, with one project with uh, Indy, because like I said, I had three simultaneously going. And with one, 
I had a lot of freedom to, as long as you're sticking to the story, we're good. Yeah. I had another one where they wanted us to be more collaborative. Like we helped with the rewrites because there was a lot they needed rewrote. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to have opinions on like a lot of different things, pulling us in and for stuff that more than what I wanted to be involved in. Right. Um, so it, it just depends, but they, it was really a lot of, you know, pre-production that didn't happen. And one of those things that's important is, can you cut that part out? <laughs> so pre-production is really, really important. That's another thing I noticed about the difference between maybe a SAG project versus an indie project. And you can know, you can be indie SAG as well. Yeah. Um, but with a project that's not SAG, versus one that is it's a lot of pre-production which is so vital it's so vital for the success of the project but people are failing to do that for whatever reason like but that's a big difference i noticed with indy they're not yeah. doing the pre-production work yeah you're just jumping right in it's really it's really a lot of times it's really good it's just yeah done. and it's okay if you have two or three actors or actresses you know because we've done it yeah. We've done projects, and we're like, okay, this is the script, this is what we're going to do, we're jumping in. But we also know um, we're doing like four or five minutes. You're, they're trying to do features with no pre-production. Yeah. It ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. And you can tell. You it's can chaotic, tell. you can tell. Yeah. You can definitely you can tell. tell. <laughs> you can definitely tell. Just turn on Tubi. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so evident. Listen, no disrespect to the Tubi, because I've been on Tubi. We, I'm pretty sure a lot of us have been on Tubi, and it's, it's a blessing. Mm. So what are, you, what are you currently working on now? Do, are you producing anything? Yeah, I mean, so right now, okay, talk yeah, about right now I just wrapped up um, uh, Dating COVID with my agency, Gail Talent Group, uh, produced okay. a film called Dating COVID, starring uh, Lisa Wu, um, Travis, that's working on The Oval right now. A guy, Big Court, out of, uh, he's in LA. And um, Jasmine Lewis. Jasmine Lewis was the lead female in that. And um, it was really a fun. We became a, a nice family during the production. And there were several filmmakers on that set that were just working in other departments. Right. And liked what I did on there and liked how I conducted myself on that set. So they've been sending me scripts for that, you know. Um, I have another production that I was casting their talent. I did a veteran scene for them. I also cast a fight scene, a, um, what are they, Stunt, stuntmen. So I was able to cast some stuntmen and women, which that felt good because I was, get, you know, people got paid for that. So that was right. good to, to get people work for that. Um, and also I had a role in that where I did a POV scene. I don't know if you saw where I had posted. I think I just posted on my story where I had the helmet on. Mm -hmm. for camera yeah. and yeah so i had so people always ask me why i work out so much and i'm like because you need that endurance and for days that you can't be on in the gym you know you still have that endurance and um for that i had to hold a gun I had, well first of all i had to have this 50 60 pound helmet on but then i had to hold a gun out bust in somebody's door i don't want to tell the story away without you know but I was able, I had to like drag someone over and over a body, you know, oh, over wow. and over again, yeah. tie them up, you know, yeah. and to have that endurance, man, I mean, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> hey. oh, yeah. I think they got, I think they, I think they were so like moved by how I was able to do it. Like, oh, let's see her do it again. No, <laughs> I mean, I'm running up and down steps with this thing on, That's but it was a lot of fun. It was a great experience. But I also just got another script. Talk about it. And I, I mean, I really, really need to take my pick on which one I'm gonna, I'm gonna take on first. You know, it's just I think it's gonna be for me about which, which company wants to give me the most freedom. Okay. Wait, hold um, on. When you say you got another script, this is for directing, correct? Um, show running. Show running. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be able to say I'll be able to I'll put the table read together, and these are the people that I want to. Have. That phone just died. <laughs> I think her phone just died again. Anyway, well, listen. 
This was a great interview. We learned a lot about what she is doing and pursuing. So what I'm going to do now is leave you guys with her reel so you can see exactly what Shafana Ray does. All right. Hey guys, thank y'all for tuning in. It's been great. I know we had a hiccup where I had to get her back on the line, but it's all good. You know the show is gonna keep on rolling. You know how we do it. But I'm here every night, every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here with somebody like Shafana Ray, dropping game, dropping gems just for you. I do it for you, can't do it without you. I mean that when I say that. All right, thank y'all. Make sure you um make sure you follow Shafana Ray right there, lower third, see? Didn't even change from the split screen so you guys can see it and make sure you follow me as well on instagram uh, and all of her links are down below you can check her out support her she's really doing a thing make sure you check her out on chicago pd tomorrow night at i don't even know what time it comes on tomorrow night but y'all check it out it's on nbc and then also she was on divorce court she has some stuff coming out on netflix she's just doing a thing man she's doing great things she's a great person great personality and i wish her the best i pray that pray the best for her all right Let's jump into a reel and we're out of here. Till next time, next Tuesday, you know where I'm at, right here, kicking it. Let's go, y'all. Shifana. Disrespect me to my face. Now, I suggest you get your ass up out of here and wait for further instructions. You might have to do something about that soft spot. I don't know what soft spot you're talking about because I ain't got no soft spot. <laughs> Come on, cuz. That photographer has you wrapped. And as long as she works for the news, you damn right. So what brings you back to the States? Well, when I heard what happened to you and your auntie Candace, I felt my presence was needed. <laughs> really? If I was here when them fools kidnapped you, it would have never went down like that. So I felt I needed to let the streets know that mama's back. Really, mom? I'm going to shoot you where it hurts, and you won't get back up. I'm going to be your worst fucking nightmare. Bitch, if you don't get the... Only four more days till I'm finished with my pills. And you know what that means. Mm-hmm. We get to start trying. Yeah, baby. About that. Yeah? I don't know how I feel about us trying to have a baby right now. Why not? I mean, must I remind you what you do for a living? What we do for a living? I'm aware, but what does that have to do with us having a baby? A lot. I don't want to be in the business when we have a baby. <laughs> We're two working adults. And an escorting service, which is highly legal. But you, we're making great money. Yeah, right now. I mean, what happens if one of us get arrested? Hell, both of us. Who's gonna raise the baby? You can't risk that. <laughs> baby. I want a baby. I know you do. So do I. But I don't think the time is right right now. Look, look. <laughs> I just keep making money and saving. Okay? <laughs> <laughs>